So, so Pandu, I was saying this. I was in the process of of changing uh, Tether over over to Ethereum, and I put some gas in there. It was gonna be fine, but then I, I checked back like a month later, and it's still stuck because the price <laughs> of Ethereum has like skyrocketed. What's going on? There's a there's a bug, uh, and this is this is well known. It's the Geth bug, G E T H. Uh, the uh, older software that is basically used by uh, users in the Ethereum network. And uh, it's mostly used uh, by mining nodes. Um, there's, it's, it's always been sort of prone to this. Uh, this is like, it's, it's, it's like, what, I think third time in th three years mm -hmm. that this happened. It's a consensus bug. Uh, and uh, they, it basically split the network in two to, <laughs> to tell it to you colloquially. So it's sort of, that's what happened. Um, the uh, there's a lot of nodes out there that are not updated, uh, and uh, they basically fucked it. Uh, there's uh, um, uh, all of these bugs. Ironically, have already been known for a mm -hmm. while, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like there's updates that are pushed, but uh, not a lot of like the nodes have updated. It's sort of a uh, yeah. I I. It's this is actually one of the reasons why you know we're talking today about the bio network and the bio sure. network, the octopus network, and the octopus network is on the near protocol. And like for for uh, those who are not in the crypto space or in the blockchain space, uh, that might be super weird and super confusing. What are these networks on top of networks? Why don't you just use Ethereum? This is why. <laughs> This, this is why we didn't use Ethereum. Um, Ethereum is basically, so the amazing thing about Ethereum is of course, it's it's the dominant uh, programmable blockchain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The thing about programmable blockchains that are shaped like Ethereum is that there's a general purpose computer, which is Ethereum itself. And then there are smart contracts, a thin layer at the top that you just basically do the programming for. So you're actually just programming a very thin layer. You're not actually programming the entire thing. Uh, the smart contract is just the application logic. You don't program the runtime. You don't program the consensus protocol. You don't program the governance of the blockchain. Right. Okay, so that's sort of an issue. It's been an issue for a while. Uh, this is why Ethereum is sometimes super cheap and sometimes super expensive. Um, a bit unpredictable, a bit unpredictable in terms of optimization as well, uh, and and a lot of people have uh, different solutions for it, um, and uh, I think Octopus Network combines the best solutions. So okay. one thing about the bio, and, and this is coming back to what we're trying to do, as you know, we are a bioinformatics blockchain. Your audience might know this, might not know this actually, but like yeah, the bio is a bioinformatics blockchain. Um, we're also focused on biomedical data. This means that we need a lot of optimization because uh, these types of data is super big, super complicated as well. So uh, we need to optimize not just the app logic. We need to optimize the runtime. We need to optimize the consensus. And because this is medical data, we need to optimize or control the governance as well in a way that is still decentralized, sure. which means we need the entire stack. To so I I, I totally yeah. understand that. Like, you know, you, you, you got one thing in the back of your head. You heard a buddy talk about Ethereum, but you really know the underpinnings of it. But it really is a complex system. And I'm so glad you're here to talk about Zibio today because mm -hmm. I know you're even closer to making this a step toward reality for people to be a part of it. But you mentioned right. the Octopus Network. You mentioned the Near Network. How yes. do they are in relation to Zibio? How do they work together to make that happen? Sure. So uh, these are these are actually different strategies that uh, to address the Ethereum issue. Ethereum, uh, because of an accident of history, Ethereum is number one. Uh, Ethereum is like uh, not just an accident of history. That's mean. Uh, Ethereum is amazing. Like there's there's a ton of program uh, programmability. A lot of people can program on it. But again, there's there's a lot of faults with having a whole world computer which is general purpose. Because when you're actually creating solutions, crafting solutions, especially enterprise and uh, hyperscale solutions, uh, you're not just optimizing the application. You're not just making the application, you're actually making like, you know, constructing the servers as well. Think of Uber, for example, the application yeah. is there. Application super good, okay. But 
it really depends on the server once it's deployed, right? Like, uh, is it optimized for this kind of data? Is it optimized for that kind of data? On the early days of Ethereum, uh, that type of data is simpler. It's just transactions, people sending Ethereum to other people. And then uh, with the rise of uh, the ERC20 tokens that are running on Ethereum, there's a lot more use cases for still at the beginning, just sending tokens over uh, to each other. Sure. But then there's a lot more stuff happening. NFTs, for example, uh, ERC721 standards, ERC1155 standards, all of those standards. Um, are actually also having a totally different sort of a use case protocol for Ethereum, mm -hmm. which is good in a usability perspective, but in terms of the optimization perspective, um, this is a computer that's initially optimized for one type of transaction, but it needs to actually do a lot more types of transactions. And of course, we, we I'm not gonna mention the consensus part. The consensus part is something that other people have, have spoken about, uh, proof of work, proof of stake, et cetera. But the idea here that I'm trying to get across is that to actually optimize an enterprise class solution, something that's hyperscale, something that's like Uber, something that's, that's like, I don't know, all, all those applications that are hyperscale, that, that's global, uh, right. you need to optimize the entire stack. So uh, that approach is the approach that is taken by uh, the multi-chain networks. So multi-chain crypto networks, including Polkadot, Cosmos, uh, Kusama, and now Octopus Network, uh, basically say that, hey, you can basically create your own blockchain, but we can be the relay chain for you, relay chain, and that blockchain can utilize us in terms of uh, the security mechanism. So we're taking care of the security for you. And sure. connecting you to the entire internet of blockchains, basically. So Polkadot, Kusama, Cosmos, and now Octopus Network. <clears throat> All of these multi-chain networks uh, have, have basically the same uh, structure. They're using some. Uh, they're they're basically uh, using the same structure, as in like you're you're creating a blockchain, a full blockchain of your own, with the AppLogic runtime, consensus protocol, and the governance as well. And uh, you're actually making it specific for a use case. So. Mm -hmm. uh, for my use case, the bio network is obviously related to biomedical data. It's right. also related to um, testing data, to, to actually uh, running services on the platform that are basically addressing like, you know, personal genetic testing services, biomedical testing services, et cetera. So there needs to be a marketplace there, e-commerce basically. And uh, there also needs to be like data flowing back and forth and value okay, flowing back and forth. So this thing, is something that we created initially on Substrate. So mm -hmm. Substrate is uh, Substrate. Uh, this uh, this method of creating a blockchain is usually uh, for uh, Polkadot and Kusama. So basically, usually using we create something called a parachain, which is that whole blockchain, and putting underneath it the Polkadot or Kusama relay chains. Sure. Okay. Now, what Octopus Networks uh, what Octopus Network actually does is it replaces it with their own religion, which is the Octopus, and it puts it on top of Near. Now, Near here is actually the game changer because what Near does um, is it uses another strategy to, uh, like, there, I, I told you, like, there are several strategies to to combat the uh, ether the issues with Ethereum, right? So mm -hmm. the other strategies, this is an L1 strategy layer one strategy, uh, it's it's called sharding. Okay. So instead of like basically having a queue of just one, there's multiple, there's shards of like uh, computing going on at the same time. And that sharding process allows near to be super fast. So I, I think I've, I've, I've um, helped you make a near wallet. So maybe you've tried it. Oh yes, I have one. Yeah. Full disclosure. I have a near wallet. Uh, the, the process was definitely a learning curve. This is why I wanted to talk to you about, about that because the last episode we talked about the bio top level, what to help out customers, what to help out clients who eventually want their bioinformatics and own their ownership. And it's so glad to see, uh, the underpinnings beneath that you take security into a, a account. You're not just this fail safes there. Uh, but that, that aside, is this platform suitable for crypto beginners? I mean, is it is it only for professional users? I mean, how much do you have to know to actually get some skin in the game when it comes to becoming a client right. of the bio? 
Right. Okay. So I apologize. Like the beginning of the podcast, I keep I keep talking about like harping on about that like, technology and how we're choosing it. Uh, you don't have to know this. Basically, okay. yeah, you just have to know. Uh, as a as a crypto beginner, you can use the bio uh, really easily without knowing like the details of like the nitty gritty of like the Octopus Network, where the near protocol on, on the bottom of it, all of those. Uh, we we are uh, optimizing. You, you, all you have to know is we're optimizing the application to ensure that you have the best experience. And uh, if you're a lab, you don't have to uh, change your business process too much. If you're a user, it just makes it easy from the UX perspective and the use, uh, usability perspective uh, because of all the optimizations at the back end. Oh yeah, and and as as CEO, as the head honcho there, bringing this brand new way of looking at things, what has been uh, some of your targets, your main client base targets, the, the main business? Like, what is your objective here as you grow to bio? We really like to be competitors to Twenty Three and Me, Ancestry.org, personal genetic testing companies, the large medical facilities, even um some some of the uh people who are doing pharmacogenetics the idea behind dbio is to have many labs multiple labs even a myriad of labs work together uh, on top of our platform to address this 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 growing need for uh biomedical testing services and genetic testing services there's there's a ton of um people out there who don't realize that their data are basically getting stolen if you're actually using um some of these centralized services. Um, some of these companies are uh, co-owned by drug uh, companies, pharmacogenetic companies that basically use your genes for computer-aided drug design mm -hmm. and not flow the value back to you. Basically, once you, you relinquish your genes, it's, it's, it's theirs. So that's, that's sort of something we're trying to solve here. The idea behind the bio is the objective behind the bio is to ensure that any lab, even like smaller labs can participate in the ecosystem, have basically a digital storefront for you to sell um, your genetic testing services, your biomedical testing services, anything from HIV testing uh, mm -hmm. to COVID-19 testing. All of those are, are, are done on top of the platform and you have a nice digital storefront to do it. And you have a system to basically send samples over, check it, <clears throat> do QC, and send back results in a way that is totally anonymous to the user. And you still get, like, safely, you get all of your payment um, escrowed in the middle. <clears throat> that is sort of, um, for the lab's perspective, um, we're trying to make a Voltron of labs. Like <laughs> <laughs> I get that reference. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're just MH. Uh, the yingling is out there. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a combination of labs working together. Basically, yeah. I, I, to me, it's fascinating because there's a it's a great idea and it's a great execution of it, but it takes a lot of grit to really build this from a vision. Uh, what's been your experience? I mean, having uh, your vision for now, the five years from now, getting people on board about what DeBio can do. What's the roadmap look like? So we're currently doing piloting uh, within like this month. We have like. Uh, three labs from two countries uh, that that are going to be doing piloting with us, um, and uh, well, we're, we're still in discussion. But one is uh, def uh, is already signing the MOU. Uh, mm -hmm. The other two are still like in discussions. But like that's that's sort of the target for this uh, this month. Um, in terms of the long term targets, uh, we are creating something called network effects. As in, and this is this is you know this is a. Mm, crypto startup school term from Anderson Horowitz, basically saying that all actors in the ecosystem must get value from an, every other actor and every other uh, and, and vice versa, basically. And the idea here being like, if you're a user, you're a crypto user, you come into the bio and there's no labs yet in your city, right? Like right. <clears throat> in Jakarta, there's no labs. You can basically stake a bunch of your tokens saying that, hey, I want a lab here. I want uh, a whole genome sequencing lab here and uh, I'm willing to pay like $500 for it. You're staking the $500. Now, the you're putting it out there and saying, if you do it, you'll get this bounty. Right. You'll get this bounty basically. So when you put it there, you are actually, the, the longer you put it there, you are actually getting rewards and mm. the rewards are staking rewards. If the labs come because of it, you get you get the rewards. Basically that's, that's sort of the way we, we uh, want to progress. 
we are ensuring that users help us get labs and vice versa. Actually, the labs are ensuring that they get users because they they're actually have this genetic storefront, the, sorry, this digital storefront of all their products that they can, you know, market. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's super, it's easier than actually having a brick and mortar store these days, clinics. A lot of people are very like, even in places where uh, it's no longer like things are no longer locked down, people are really used to being in your house and, right. and not going anywhere. Uh, yeah. That you know that convenience, right? Um, yeah, you know, and, and, and this is this is sort of uh, what we're trying to do for the next uh, few years, uh, focusing on uh, building the uh, labs network. Um, this is also why DBIO is actually part of DIYBio.org which is a coalition of basically labs, um, DIY bio labs that are actually doing this. Um, we, we want to collaborate with the smaller labs. Um, if you're a lab, in fact, and you're interested, <clears throat> you can just contact us at like the bio.network and uh, we'll get back to you. Uh, we, we want this to be a global initiative. It's not just like Indonesia, it's not just Asia, it's not just Singapore. Yeah. Um, one thing, the only reason we are in Singapore is that it allows the business to take tokens as payment mm -hmm. without any legal issues, legal repercussions. And uh, getting that is actually, you know, that is that is actually uh, quite cool. The Singapore is actually a very good environment for us to do this. <clears throat> and uh, at the same time, like for you as a user, there's not a lot of issues in basically getting your genetic uh, like the genetic testing on this platform, simply because when you're actually using it, your KYC never enters the platform, which means that the data that is in there, that is um, not personally identified data anymore. It's de-identified data. And uh, under HIPAA, de-identified data, as long as you can basically prove that it's de-identified, doesn't have the, per like, it, it doesn't have the rules of personally identifiable data. So anyway, we're focusing on that. We're focusing on growing the labs. We're focusing on ensuring that people understand that you know all of these worries are, are actually uh, something that we've already thought of. Um, and uh, yeah, we want to ensure that the platform can compete against not the crypto uh, uh, projects where we want to compete with like uh, the mainstream, uh, biomedical and uh, bioinformatics, personal genetic testing companies. And so KYC in this case is just like, what, like the genetic markers or the identification oh. of it, like? Uh, KYC is uh, is identification. So um, the, the bio is anonymous first. Okay. So uh, if a lab insists, uh, they can have a conversation with the person and, well, not if the lab insists to get KYC, the lab can get KYC but KYC never enters the system. So KYC is know your customer. It's a, sort of a banking term. It's, it's, it's not a common term, I just realized. It's your ID, it's your identity. Anything that is personally identifiable as you, uh, your name, your address, that's 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 part of your KYC. Um, so the bio allows you to actually get your gene sequence anonymously. You get your uh, uh, biomedical, well, well any, any kind of testing anonymously, which, which is a boon for a lot of people, especially like, in these times, right, COVID times, um, a lot of people are hankering on about privacy and, and trying to get like, you know, uh, but at the same time, they also need to get tested. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people are getting worried about like some, some are worried about vaccine passports as well. Um, but like, let's, let's take another example. Let's, let's not talk about COVID, even though like it's, it's obviously part of it, but uh, let's talk about HIV. Okay. In sure. In parts of the like uh, parts of the world that still still carries massive stigma if you're HIV positive, and even going to the hospital to check if you're HIV positive might carry stigma. And uh, with the state of like privacy laws in like a lot of countries in the world, that is like you know that is a real issue. <laughs> like if something mm -hmm. gets leaked. so, uh, and uh, that's sort of something that we can solve. Uh, instead of actually having to go and give your name out to get HIV testing services, you can do it by uh, at-home sampling. <clears throat> and, you know, that's that's also true for COVID. That's also true for other uh, diseases with stigma for any reason, like syphilis, like oh, all, of this, all of these things. Um, you sample at home. You, if it's genetic testing service, 
then you basically swab the insides of your cheeks 10 times each. Uh, that is called a buckle swab. It's, uh, it's important that it's in like the middle of the, uh, like the insides of the cheek because it's uh, epithelial cells there regenerate quickly. So you'll get like the pure, the, the DNA yield is better. And you send over uh, basically that, that swab, you put it into a sample bottle and you put it in an envelope. The envelope basically you put like a code on it. <clears throat> and that code is like a Swiss bank account. It's Swiss bank account, you know, no name. Right. Yes, just a, just a, and that's actually related to your public key on the blockchain, but it's also your sample number. So public key plus sample. That is sent over by mail, snail mail, regular mail, and received by the lab that you chose from the application. So it should be a local lab, anything that you can basically send samples to. The lab receives it, takes a look, puts in the number in their side of the DeBio application, and they do their sequencing, they do their thing, they do their QC, <clears throat> they release basically the results. And the results is, well, and, and again, there's no name here, but the results are encrypted with your public key, then been put into like IPFS, which is uh, blockchain storage. So it's put there and you, the user, because it's encrypted with your public key, this right. is asymmetric encryption, you are the only one that can decrypt it with your private key, which never leaves you. So that's mm. that's the sort of the flow, and uh, that that kind of flow is is actually quite new. It's uh, I, I was amazed to hear it, but I haven't seen anyone else doing it. But it's like mathematically correct. Uh, you can basically put a physical sample, any kind of physical sample, and get sequencing for it, get testing, get analysis for it, and then send it back. Uh, without KYC coming in, but having like the crypto flow there uh, with the escrow, you can pay for it. Uh, so this is this is sort of the core of the buy. Sure. sure. So you don't really yeah. have to go out to a lab and be all embarrassed if, in case you're like, oh, yeah. what's what's that on me? Uh, <laughs> you mentioned earlier uh, the the comparing it to uh, something like Uber, which is a great example because the first time I heard Uber, I was like, wait, my phone would get me a cab? This makes no sense. Uh, but now it's part of our culture. We say, I Ubered over here. It's a verb yeah. now. So uh, okay. as I ask you this, as a company that had to get so many different rounds of funding like Uber and even operating years and years out of loss, as mm -hmm. an investment prospect, like what is the benefit if I wanted to invest in the bio now? What can that benefit me? Why, why should I even consider the business as it is at this stage? Okay. We are actually doing a lot of things to start this out. Uh, like we're, uh, we're, we have uh, several mechanisms in place uh, that allow users to stake their data and sell it to a genetic test, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, data marketplace. The data marketplace is called the ocean marketplace. And uh, that ocean marketplace is where you know, data flows go. Um, and uh, this means that from the beginning, the business is already monetizing uh, the data, uh, of course, with the consent of all of the users. And uh, that data is worth a lot. Uh, the bioinformatics industry is about $11 billion with a B uh, mm -hmm. worldwide now. And uh, in 2025, it's going to be like $18 billion. Uh, I think that's one number that was, that was quoted. Um, growth is amazing. And uh, that, that, that when you're investing in the bio, you're actually investing for a place um, in that set of data and set in that data marketplace. So it's... Uh, uh, that's one side of the story. The other side of that, well, that's one side of the equation, I should say. The other side of the equation is, of course, the services marketplace. You're, 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 uh, of course, we're all aware we're in a pandemic. Uh, a lot of people are actually seeking out services like this, but also trying to find a way to make it private or to find a way to make it as secure as possible, as in you don't have to leave your house. And uh, this is not just one political spectrum; it's multiple. <laughs> so right. this is a lot of. A lot of people are actually just, just you know, this is this is something like uh, either you want your privacy or you want to stay home and you know be safe and not get COVID. Um, that's uh, that's another part. Uh, this is also why we're launching this year. The idea of the bio has been around since 2018. Um, I've I've spoken about it in several conferences, including the uh, what was it uh, blockchain economic forum back in 2018, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, some other software architecture form or something like there's 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 videos online so 
uh, speaking about the bio back then, um, we were only focusing on the data monetization part, but we're not, we weren't focusing on the services part. Um, this year we solved basically the services part with that flow that I told you about. That oh, services okay. part is the key to the, to, to, to the rest of it. And also because of COVID, it has a stronger use case. Uh, a lot of people currently require it. Um, these services, these testing services, they, they, you know, and, and they require it in a way that is safer. So it's not just because it's anonymous, it's also because it's DIY, it's because something, it's something you can do at home and uh, you can basically get results at home without leaving uh, your house. And, you know, the anonymity, um, because that's also a hot button topic um, currently because of the vaccine passports on all of those. Um, yeah, let me, let me, that, that, that's, that's sort of, uh, you know, uh, investing in the bio means that you're investing directly into this ecosystem of data and you're investing in something that, you know, makes a huge amount of sense. Um, and in the context of the current world, that sense is strengthened basically. So, yeah. yeah. As you press on with this and, and, and try to grow and, and get about people on board. I mean, has there been anything in the form of competition? Are there any companies out there are, are are doing a similar thing you're doing right now? Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't mention too many names. I already, I think I already <laughs> mentioned a lot, but like there's, there's this one company that is also a blockchain company that is in the bioinformatics space. But what they're doing is they're creating yet another another lab. So yet another centralized lab that does the testing, that does all of those, and then they're releasing the results. Which is, I think, an issue. You're 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 actually centralizing everything again. You're actually right. centralizing the data again. You have access to the data, even though you say that you're anonymous. You still have access to the genetic data of a lot of people. So that's 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 sort of a. Mm, I'm uh, I'm 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 not keen on actually, uh, you know, saying the name uh, out loud. But the the that other uh, company, I I think they're not. Uh, doing decentralization correctly because the key to actually decentralizing this is also not uh, is also decentralizing the labs part of it sure. um, and becoming basically a pure data and services platform, which is what DeepIO is. Right, and and that's I like like that because security is first. It's different ways uh, that I guess you keep your integrity of data of your clients in the labs as well. So right. that's that's pretty awesome. Right, and, and, and you know the multiple labs thing that is actually key to it because it's a community of labs that's like um, here's here's the thing, not all labs have the resources of twenty three and me, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to be like twenty three and me, you have to have all of this 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 end to end pipeline of data, and uh, that's that's uh, that's and yes, that's next generation sequencing. That's also all the analytics after it. It's also like the genetic consulting part. So there's a flow. Right, uh, starts from sampling, then you put like the sample into like the sequencer. The sequencer uh, vomits out <laughs> this right. huge data set. This huge data set needs to be cut down in a way that makes sense, etc., etc., etc. There's just actually multiple steps. What we hope with the bio is not just that smaller labs can uh, can uh, like put their wares uh, at a digital storefront. But smaller labs can work together with other smaller labs. So small labs working together to create a product. Mm -hmm. Just one product, but it's actually collaborate. Like multiple labs are collaborating on it. We're still working on this. We're still working on basically interlab collaboration. Uh, it's a toughie, but like it's something that we can do. But why and is it a toughie? I'm curious. It's a toughie because there are multiple, you know, um, different parts. multiple different parts, multiple business processes, etc. We don't want to go into uh, too deep to the business processes, but we do need to find like a touch point where one data can 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 cross to another. And some of these data sets are super big. Your uh, your human genome is like seven hundred megs in total. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, that's seven hundred megs. Um, and of course, uh, sequencing is lossy. The the like if you have a good device, it's not as lossy. But if you have a cheaper device. It's lossy, and that means it could be like gigs and gigs uh, of, of data coming out of the sequencer. That is super slow when you're actually sending from lab to lab, like even even through the internet. Like, well, even if you like have a high speed modem or some stuff, that's that's gonna be super slow. 
So um, 700 megs, that's, that's sort of a, the, the human genome. But luckily, we don't have to send uh, the entirety of that to, 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 to basically do the uh, analysis. Uh, we can do something called, uh, we can create something called the VCF file, which is a variant file. Mm -hmm. A variant file is uh, you take a reference human and <laughs> compare it to your genome. Like, it's for real, it's reference human genome compared to your genome. And you check the differences. Oh, this, this part I'm different, this part. Basically, there are constants to every human. And you're basically just checking the variables, and that is the VCF file, and it can be much smaller. We're currently only working with the VCF file, okay. Which means we can't get to like the earlier part. Th that's why it's a toughie because we can't get to the earlier part of the process. Um, technically, we can just do like we can already do a lot of things with the current uh, system, like uh, genetic consulting. For example, there, there are people out there who are genetic consultants. They they get the report, and they help us read and understand it. And that's it. That's that's their job, basically. We can already do that with the bio, actually. So uh, hopefully at launch, we would be able to put it in the MVP. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's sort of uh, a small way of doing it. But in the future, what we really hope, and if the technology basically catches up, we would be able to have like smaller labs, just like the small labs are just doing sequencing and then just giving yeah. the file over without doing any analysis, without doing any variant analysis, without doing any of that, uh, without making the sm file small even. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's, uh, yeah that's, that's sort of the overview. It seems a lot of things are happening at once ahead of launch. What keeps you motivated? What keeps you going and not saying, ah, forget this, I want to, Join the circus. Like, I mean, there's a lot of things <laughs> happening here. What, what, what's first, of all, I'm not, first of all, I'm not talented enough to join. The circus. <laughs> <laughs> I can juggle. I don't know. I can't. I can't. I can probably be the fat lady that sings that. <laughs> Is that a circus or like it's not an opera? That's an opera. That's that's an opera. No, <laughs> I haven't been in the circus in a while. No. Okay. So, but what keeps me motivated are jokes and memes, but that's right, that's right, okay. right. Um, no, I, I really, really uh, am very passionate about decentralization. I think you've seen, like, you Flo, personally have seen that I've, I've, I've been in this space for a, for, for a long time because mm -hmm. um, this, this, it's not, for me, it's not because, you know, of the gains of having crypto. I, I don't do a lot of that. I don't do a lot of trading. I do a lot of making and I do a lot of supporting projects that I like. The, the, the bio... It's sort of my brainchild since like 2018. Like, like even the, like glimmers of it actually appeared in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, my background is like, well, I'm I'm an environmental engineer actually, and I focus really heavily on microbiology. Like, even my actual first paying job, which is at like uh, my college college lab, was as a as a microbiologist, microbiology lab assistant. To be fair. Um, I have certifications in bioinformatics I've never used, I have genomic data science certificates that I've never used. Just a lot of things here that, um, you know, I, I think, uh, first of all, I think I'm the, um, me and my team are the only people able to make this uh, real and, and not just, you know, not just, oh, uh, yeah, bioinformatics and blockchain, what a good idea. Not right. just an idea, but actually execution. Um, I think we're the only team that can do it. So that's that sort of motivates me because you know what? If, we, if we're in a good position to actually change history and change um, the way companies treat your data. I want to tell you a story mm -hmm. about this is this is really like the you, you can probably you probably know about this. Do you, have you heard of uh, HeLa cells? H E L A? No, tell me. Okay, so so uh, Henrietta Lacks uh, in 1951 uh, was a mother who uh, had cancer, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, and um, she didn't survive, but some of her cells did, her cancer cells, right? So this, mm -hmm. these cancer cells carry her DNA, carry her genes, carry uh, everything about her, and they kept on dividing. They became what are called HeLa cells because Henrietta lacks, right, HeLa. Mm -hmm. And HeLa cells basically are the world's first immortal immortal human cell line, mm -hmm. right? Back in 1951, um, it was used for research 
and was used everywhere. Uh, a lot of universities, uh, well, it's, it's still being used today, actually. Um, and the crazy thing is, Henrietta Lacks never knew. Okay, of course, she, she died. Her family didn't know for years and years and years that her a piece of their mother's body is still alive and replicating and being researched on. Wow. This is true. Googleable. <laughs> this is this is this I'm doing is it so, right now, actually. It's pretty yeah. cool. Pretty <laughs> so wild. You know, it's wild, right? But but this is this has nothing to do with the bio except for the sampling part, probably. Like we're we're not culturing souls. Uh, just I, I want your audience to know that. But mm -hmm. it shows the behavior of like the 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 this pro profession. Well, I have the utmost respect for the biomedical profession. Of course, my my father's a doctor, my sister's a doctor, uh, that's uh, my brother in law's a doctor, my grandfather's a doctor. <laughs> yeah. But um but the thing is, when you're actually, when you are, you're actually in this field, and like you're, you're getting uh, all of this data sets coming in, you sometimes just think about your research, and you don't think of like basically monetizing the, flowing back the value to the people who originated uh, these sets of data, and uh, the thing is, when we're just talking about data that are like social media data. It's already quite creepy, right? The, the Cam Cambridge Analytica thing, all, all, all the, 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 the Facebook stuff, that's already kind of creepy. But what's super creepy is that this is your genes. This is your DNA. This is, your, this is something that's actually you. Like um, this is a piece of code that if incubated properly <laughs> would become another you. So if, if that, is, is, is something that is um, being monetized. You it should at least get some piece of it. Right. Um, yeah, so so that's Henrietta Lacks uh, shows that in a different way because like, you know, it's monetization. And at the end, like this is like in the early 2000s, I think the family uh, sued sued the research companies or the city, I, I forgot. Like they, they, they sued, it's in the US by the way. So you, you should be able to. Uh, see who they sued. I'm not going to mention. I right. want to get sued, but <laughs> right. um, the uh, uh, so that's uh, yeah. So uh, uh, so Henrietta Lacks's family gets gets uh, like the back pay basically of of, of like you know uh, their their mother's cell line, but like that was years after. That was years after. That was decades after. Sure. Um. Yeah. Th so that's that's one story. And there are other stories happening out there. Um, there was a Time article recently about, and I can mention this because it's on Time, 23andMe uh, uh, being owned uh, by GlaxoSmithKline, 33% uh, mm -hmm. percent, and the Time article was uh, asking questions about, hey, you know, this isn't, is this good? Is this right? Is this, uh, is this, and and uh, because of the, you know, because GlaxoSmithKline is a, is a, um, um, pharmacogenetics company well it's it, it's pharma but it does it uses analysis of your genes to do something called computer aided drug design they're designing drugs based on genes kyc that's well not genes and kyc genes and your profile basically but is that good is that not creepy right. so what keeps me motivated and going back to like i think of that's that's uh, yeah. That's a while a while ago we spoke about what motivated me, <laughs> but what what motivates me constantly, and uh, this is true of all of my projects. I happen to think that decentralization is the way that the human race is supposed to go, if it wants to keep its humanity. <laughs> because okay, that's not kind of deep. <laughs> oh, that's that's really deep. Yeah. <laughs> think think about the singularity, right? We don't know. We don't know if it's gonna come, but if it really comes, would you want your, you know, your mental state to be stored in a server that you own, or should it be owned by big tech? Should it be owned by, you know, the major companies and you pay rent to live? Um, that's super futuristic, but we're already going to be doing that for our, you know, loved ones' mental models, because when we're talking about AI. 
I'm using GPT-3. I've seen all of the, uh, like, there, there's a lot of AI right now that, that can just, you know, simply take your Facebook posts, your Twitter posts, and just copy you almost exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, those are publicly available. And, and you know what, like, if your loved one dies, and that set of data is basically um, <laughs> relinquished by that person, and it's, it's used to make chatbots, for example, wouldn't that be creepy? And w- would it, it's not quite the singularity yet because we know it's a chatbot, right? But what if like, I don't know, like what if it happens to be sort of a, what if you're, what if, what if humanity as a whole comes to that and uh, we're, we're not, we're, we're not ready to decentralize yet. And we just relinquish everything that we have to like the centralized entities. I think it would be much, much worse. Um, I really believe in the blockchain in that way. I really believe in decentralization in that way. When I said I'm not in it from for the crypto, I'm not saying that crypto isn't good. I'm not saying that value isn't good. I'm saying that value is a means to an end. And the end is to ensure that you have proper decentralization um, that is not just you know focused on like uh, people accumulating wealth and 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 you know standing in the middle, centralizing everything. Um, this, this is, this brings me to another discussion. Actually, this is about governance, the governance discussion. I actually mentioned governance several times earlier, but like governance in blockchain is of course, just governance of the DAO of the decentralized autonomous organization or distributed autonomous organization, I should say. Mm -hmm. Um, governance, uh, is based on votes, of course. Uh, but it can also use a lot of systems like something called sortition, which is, uh, basically randomly select, selecting several people from uh, the population to basically get, get you know, uh, get their opinion on something or get their decision on something. Uh, the idea being that it's better than democracy because there's no centralization of power, even like mob rule. Um, so there are a lot of experiments in the blockchain space that a lot of people out there are not realizing. And a lot of these are actually very high level stuff. It's not, uh, it's not even tacky things. It's not even crypto things. It's not, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's governance things. How do we decide? How do we create organizations that are fair to each other and fair to the community and actually create value for everyone? Um, this is sort of the spirit of the blockchain space. So when we're talking about tokens, we're, we're not finding ways to just, you know, take your money or, 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 or or even like hundred x your money. We're trying to find ways to uh, ensure that incentivization mm-hmm. grows the organization well, and in that incentivization does it in a way that adds value to the whole, not just you know take. Wow. I went on. I went out on a rant there, Flo. I'm sorry. Uh, that's, well, I, that's, I think uh, that's what motivates you and the fact that you wanted to create this and to help the, the greater good means a lot. But I had a, a good time learning about, more about the bio, and I'm, I'm sure our listeners did well as well. If anyone wanted to learn more about that, how to go about doing that, Pamdu? Sure. Uh, well, the bio network is the bio dot network. Uh, just, uh, that's easy. The <laughs> uh, network, and uh, you can see the white paper there. Uh, there's a ton of stuff there about like the deck is there. There's uh, some videos. We have uh, a lot of media coverage for, uh, uh, as well. Uh, some, some there's there's also some articles like that, that back what I mentioned earlier about like the times are the time article is there. Um, you can just take a look. Uh, we are on Twitter. Uh, it's the Bio underscore network, and we are on Telegram as at the Bio network. Just you know type that in. You'll 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 find our. Uh, our amazing telegram group um and yeah uh I'm, I'm really keen to talk more about this uh this got a lot philosophical but the bio network is actually very practical uh it's simple it's basically it's, uh, an amazon for personal genetic testing and biomedical testing where you can offer services and it also allows you to monetize your uh biomedical data in a way that is sovereign to you um yeah that's how and you're, and you're looking to launch uh, full on this year, next sure. year. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, we, we are launching in, uh, in October. Um, 
at the earliest uh, because we're, we're still waiting for for a few things to boot up from the Octopus Network, obviously. So um, the Octopus Network being our relay chain uh, needs to be uh, active first before we can activate on top of it. Uh, but there's a lot of things that are going to come next week and uh, next, sorry, next month. Well, next month since this podcast, which would be in October. Uh, so end of October, we're hoping to get the mainnet launched. And uh, we're go also going to be doing a set of uh, fundraising. Um, it's called IDO, Initial Dex Offering. And that's actually going to happen in a place called Skyward Finance. That's over at the NEAR protocol, which means you do need a NEAR wallet to get uh, involved. Um, it is very... It is very cool. There's there's a ton of stuff that is going on, uh, and that's going to happen next month. Um, very excited for that. Uh, and next month is also going to be like during the IDO. That means that the bio is going to be live. We're going to be live uh, as an MVP first. So some of the functionalities will not be there at, at launch, but uh, a lot of the functionalities will. Um, you can already upload your electronic medical records, for example, into a super safe. Um, system that is only uh, visible by you. Um, you can already uh, request labs to come into your area. And if you already have, if you're lucky enough to have a lab in your area, you can even actually do the genetic testing part or the biomedical testing part or whatever. That's sort of uh, the agenda. I'm, I'm really excited for everything that's happening. We've been working super hard uh, doing, uh, you know, the, the coding part, the marketing part, everything back to back. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for everything that's going to happen.